All right. Um, so today I find the scripture we read very encouraging, personally, very encouraging. And it really strengthened my walk with Christ. And I hope somehow, somehow you may find the same blessing through this message uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So today we read two parables and both of them are about seed. If you scroll up to the beginning of this chapter, you'll find another parable, another parable that is also about seed. So in Mark chapter four, you'll find three parables and they all are, you know, they all have something to do with seed. And Jesus used them all to explain what the kingdom of God is like. The emphasis in this parable is different, but I find all of them are interwoven beautifully and powerfully and culminate into this wonderful message that will help us better understanding of what kingdom of God is like. The first parable is about ground, okay? And second parable is about growth. And the third and last parable is about greatness. So ground, growth, greatness, three Gs. I hope you remember that, okay? The first parable is about the ground. It's, all, it's about good soil, the readiness of our hearts. So the emphasis in this parable is obvious. The matter is not the seed. The issue is not the effectiveness of the word of God, but always the matter is here, your heart, your ground. So is your heart a good ground? Is your heart ready to bear many fruits when the seed falls onto your ground? The second parable is about growth. So let's say you have a good ground. Let's say you have a prepared heart and onto this ground, the seed fell and planted. And now Jesus illustrates how it sprouts and grows. Jesus says, the kingdom of God is like a man who casts seed upon the soil and the seed sprouts and grows. How? He himself does not know. So the immediate answer to the sprouting and growing and how it works. Here's what the Bible says. He himself does not know how. It's a mystery. And I want you to think about your own faith journey, how you start believing in Jesus, how you start walking and following Jesus. I'm sure I'll hear multiple, multiple answers from everyone. You know, I don't think there is any formula, you know, in our faith. Like if you read the Bible three times, or if you pray three times a day, you'll be saved or you'll believe in Jesus. No, we don't have an equation like that. And we shall never limit the work of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says we don't know where the wind is coming from and where it is going. But the only thing we know is that it's working and that it saves people and makes them grow by the power of the Holy Spirit. In verse 28, it says the soil produces crops by itself. Here the word by itself in Greek is automatos, from which we derive the word automatic. So it means the seed grows automatically. And think about the automated vehicles you know, that we hear these days. What are those automated vehicles? You know, it drives autonomously, right? Meaning that it can move without your hands on the wheel and or your feet on the paddles. So your car doesn't need you to drive to go somewhere because it's automatic. So when the Bible says, the soil produces crops by itself means there is no need for human involvement or actions for it to grow. The soil automatically brings forth the growth of the seed because the seed, which is the word of God, has a power within itself to grow and prosper. And as the scripture, Hebrews chapter 4, 12 goes, for the word of God is living and active. So once the word of God is planted on the good ground, it grows automatically by the power of God. It will take you to where God wants you to be. Let's never forget this. Our salvation and our sanctification are out of God's grace, not out of our works. So in terms of the seed sprouting and growing, our salvation and sanctification, we have no part in it. But the Bible says we have something on our plate. We have a responsibility as a sower, as a sower. What does that mean? Thankfully, this parable gives more details about this profession as a sower 
It provides three job requirements or job descriptions as a SOAR. And number one responsibility is, as a SOAR, we need to be faithful and consistent to keep scattering the word of God, to keep scattering the word of God. The scripture says, he, the SOAR, goes to bed at night and gets up daily, scattering the word of God on a daily basis. This is like this. One day you wake up in the morning and scatter the word of God. You sleep in the night. Next morning, you wake up in the morning and, 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 and do it again and go to sleep. And next morning, wake up again and, and, and do it again, scattering the word of God. And this cycle goes on and on and on and on and on. Keep scattering the word of God, making the most of every opportunity to win the souls. But here, let me ask you a question. To which soil? This parable indicates that we shall shatter, scatter the word of God. The instant answer will be the people around us, our neighbors, our friends, our families, or random people on the street. Yes, that's the right answer. We shall evangelize them. We shall plant the, plant the good seed to the people next to us. But I see the parable is unclear regarding which soil we shall spread the word of God. Back to verse 26. It says, the kingdom of God is like a man who casts seed upon the soil. So it does say we shall cast seed upon the soil, but it doesn't say which soil in particular. So I think the soil here has double meanings. One is the, like, like I said, like we understand, the ground of others. We shall make disciples of all nations. Another is your own ground, your own soul, your own heart. You see, you need to scatter the word of God to yourself, daily basis. Meditate the day and night on this living and active God's words to work out your own salvation. Scatter the word of God to your heart, to your soul, as well as to others. So that's job number one as a sower. Number two, as a sower, we need to be patient. The scripture says the soil produces crops by itself. First, the stalk, then the head, then the mature grain in the head. So what does it say? It simply says it takes time to grow. It's a gradual process, not an immediate process. It's not like Jack and the beanstalk. Okay, what's the story about? Jack plants a seed outside his window before bed only a night after in the morning he finds a humongous tree all the way out into the air and he climbs up the tree enters the cancel beats a giant take all the treasures be rich and be happy <laughs> everything happens instantly no in contrast jesus says it takes time the kingdom of god takes time for growth maybe much longer than you expect. Therefore, as a sower, we need to learn how to be patient, to wait and wait and wait. Number three, as a sower, we wait not hopelessly, but in the hope of the harvest. The scripture says, now when the crop permits, he immediately puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Here, the language of harvest or putting forth the sickle for the harvest it's a biblical language about the judgment day or the final day or the full coming of the kingdom of God. One of the consistent messages in the Bible is that there will be the final day. There will be the harvest day. Nobody knows for sure when or how and what it'll be like, but it will come for sure. And once it comes, it comes immediately. It's surprising people's minds. So James chapter 5, 7 to 8 says, Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious produce of the soil, being patient about it. You too be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. So what was the source job requirement? Number one, we need to be faithful and consistent to keep scattering the word of God daily to others and to ourselves. Number two, as a sower, we need to be patient in waiting and trusting that God is at work. Number three, we wait, not hopelessly, but wait in the hope of the harvest. Jesus will come again to judge the living and the dead. But I ask, 
Is this an easy job? Of course not. Even doing a little tiny thing in our lives, everyday basis is not easy at all. Think about you go to work every day. Is it easy? <laughs> you know, like these days I hear the people are getting back to their offices and traffic is getting worse and worse. It's not easy. Think about, think about, you know, what about doing dishes every day? What about cleaning your home, cleaning your home every day? And if you're raising your children, taking care of your children every day, giving them a ride, feeding them every meal. Yes, it's a blessing, but it's not easy. It's hard. It requires a lot of patience. It requires a lot of hope and encouragement. Then how much more will it be essential and hard to carry on God's mission, planting the seed, scattering the word of God in every way possible daily? It's not easy at all. Absolutely not. Sometimes you'll be in tears because you may be tired. You may feel weak or worn out or burnt out from doing God's works and following his lead. You may want to say, God, I don't think I can go any further. God, I'm so tired. God, I think I'm lost again. But hear what the Bible says. Those who sow in tears shall harvest with joyful shouting. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. The third parable is about greatness. Now, interestingly, the seed here becomes more specific. It's not a random seed, but it has a name. It's a mustard seed, which represents smallness or nothingness. It's too small that no one would think or imagine anything big or great will come out of it. The mustard seed usually about one to two millimeters, which is 0 0.039 to 0 0.079 inches in diameter, and it could grow to heights of 10 to 12 feet with a thickness of three to four inches. So imagine this little tiny seed you know, grows tall enough to reach the ceiling of this chapel building. That's stunning and fascinating, right? So this illustration of the small beginning to the great ending is the point that Jesus wanted to make here. Because the kingdom of God comes from something utterly very small and something utterly that seems insignificant in human eyes. But once it reaches its full growth by the grace of God, it will be great and glorious, and magnificent. The parable doesn't end here. It shows what happens when this greatness of the kingdom of God finally arrives. What's the result of the com coming of the kingdom of God? See what the parable says here, verse 32. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and forms large branches with the result that the birds of the sky can nest under its shade. So when it grows fully and, and manifests its greatness, the kingdom of God, it draws all the birds of the air and they make nest in its shade. It draws all the birds from all directions, all kinds of birds, red, blue, green, brown, white, black, what other colors? <laughs> Pink. <laughs> and, and from all directions, from east, west, north, and south. So on this tree, we find all different kinds of birds with different colors and sizes and hear various sounds of birds sharpling. When the Bible uses this image of birds nesting in branches, it implies God's inclusion for all people. In the first century context, when this Bible, when this gospel was written, it was the Gentiles becoming part of God's family. So note this, the greatness of the kingdom of God is not in the power of exclusion, but in the power of inclusion. If you want to witness what the kingdom of God looks like, Picture this, that all kinds of different people finding their seats, feel welcomed and, and, and accepted 
and making this place as their home to rest and refresh, to worship and praise one Father God in and through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And I hope you feel that today. So let me wrap up the message. Today you heard ground, growth, greatness, ground, having good soil, having a readiness of your heart is the first step to enter into the growth and greatness of the kingdom of God. Growth, our salvation and sanctification are the work of God. It's out of God's grace. It's automatic. But our job is to be the sower, to scatter the word of God to others and to ourselves consistently and faithfully day and night and wait for the growth in faith and confidence that the harvest will come for sure. And greatness, even though what we see and what we do here may seem small and insignificant to the worldly eyes, but there will be the end of God's story and it will be great, glorious, and marvelous. And with this greatness, this is what is going to happen. It will draw everyone from all different places and bind us together as one big family with one Father God, as one true worshiper. So what does this message speak to you and to me today? Earlier, I said this message was uplifting and encouraging to me and this strengthened my walk with Christ. Why? Because first and foremost, it reminds me that God is at work, no matter what I see or what I feel or what I experience. Sometimes I see myself as small, tiny, little mustard seed. Do you ever feel that? Yeah. Especially at those moments, you compare yourself with others. You start feeling small and nothing. But the scripture says, you know what, Paul? If you find yourself small, tiny mustard seed, it's actually a good sign. Because God's kingdom comes out of your smallness not out of the greatness. Because man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And sometimes I feel tired from all the repetitive cycles, day and night, and asking myself, how long, Lord? How much more? But the scripture today reminds me who I am as a sower. It reaffirms my identity. Yes, I'm the sower. My job is to scatter the seed of the word of God to others and to myself each and every day. It may be hard, but be patient and wait, not hopelessly, but with the hope that there will be the harvest day full of joy. Does this speak something to you? I hope it does. And I hope you hear the encouragement from God. And may you be able to reaffirm who you are as a sower of the kingdom of God. So let me close with the God's words. So here I'm trying to scatter extra seeds onto your soil, okay? And I wonder, you know, are you ready to receive them? Amen? Amen. So here are a couple more scriptures. I want to bless you. Hear me this. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we'll reap our harvest if we do not give up. Amen.